Are we safe? Did anyone see you? No. Why are we meeting so far from the city? Do you think it would be wise for this meeting to be overheard by anyone? Are you sure you weren't followed? Not unless whatever's following has wings. We don't have much time. Daniel being put over us, if we allow it to stand, means our demise. Once he is in charge, he'll be looking into everything we do. Perhaps... Perhaps we should eliminate him. How? A hunting accident. He doesn't hunt. A sudden illness or a drowning. Who would believe it? Maybe we can ensnare him. How? There is no corruption in him, nor any negligence. He is as diligent as he is skillful. There must be some way. He claims he's so effective because three times a day his heart inclines to the city of God. There's a spirit of excellence in him. In every test he has proven faithful. No one is that honest. On the contrary. I had a man tried to bribe him once, and a very generous bribe at that. He would have no part of it. Such a man is dangerous. How long before he learns that we've been generous with ourselves? And covered the thefts with false accounts? We'll never be able to find any basis for charges against him unless it has something to do with that god of his. That invisible god of his. No altars, no shrines, no idols laying claim to every good thing, yet somehow not responsible for the bad. I've seen him praying before his window, on his knees facing Jerusalem morning, noon, and night, always the same. Then perhaps we need to make him stop. He won't do it. Then perhaps we need to make sure he continues. You say there is nothing anyone can do to stop his prayers? No, nothing. What if the penalty for this devotion of his was death? If we could forbid his prayers for an entire month under penalty of immediate execution? Don't be ridiculous. I'll just stop praying. No, he won't. I know him. He can't keep himself from praying to that god of his for one day, let alone a month. Well, I still don't see how it'll ever work. The king knows that Daniel and his people pray continuously. And only to one God. Which is why we need to disguise our purpose. O oh, King, it has come to our attention that there are those among your subjects who still cling to the old gods of Babylon in the hopes that their line of kings may yet be restored. And have not submitted to your rule. Who are they? That I may bring them before me and destroy them. It is not that simple of a matter to detect them, O King, for they are devious and work to hide their treasonous thoughts. And if you come before me without a plan for discovering them? We would dare not do so, O King. Indeed, we have labored to construct a plan whereby the loyalty of all may be tested. Then speak of it. If, O King, you were to issue an edict that none in Babylon nor anywhere in the Empire may pray to anyone, be it to God or man, except to you for a period of 30 days. But what of the gods of Persia whom my servant obey? Well, you alone, O king, would be free to pray to them and offer them sacrifice. You would stand as a priest before all the peoples and in this way ingratiate yourself to the gods themselves because for an entire month all of their worship would come from you. Thus their worship will continue through you and the old gods of Babylon will be starved for worship, lessening their power. How would you enforce such an edict? No one would be allowed to go before any altar or shrine for the entire period except for you. And anyone found violating the decree would be thrown into the lion's den before sundown on the very day of the offense. In this way, their treason would be discovered and eliminated in a single stroke. I approve your plan. I, Darius, command it be made so. In anticipation of your approval, O King, we have taken the liberty of drafting the edict and bringing it along. Well done. Bring it here that I may fix my seal. Let all the world hear and obey. So Darius found no need to consider it further. Darius had a great deal of experience as a soldier, but very little as a ruler, until Babylon fell. One sign. The order could not be changed. Let every order be upheld, for the law cannot be countermanded, and the laws cannot contradict themselves. 
Let each law be fixed, unchangeable, for the king cannot err. And once a law is written, even the king himself cannot change it. Such is the law of the Persian. Daniel, the king's seal is barely dry. Already you have defied his law. You made your choice. You chose your god over your king. Take him away! O oh, king, it is my sad duty to inform you that someone has already defied your decree. Bring him to me. Bring forth the prisoner. Daniel, he is one of the exiles from Judah. He pays no attention to you, O king, or to the decree you have put in writing. He still prays three times a day. What sort of foolishness is this? Daniel's my chief advisor. No one is above the law. Yes, sadly, O king, no one is above the law. Bring forth the tablet. Is this not the edict from the king? Signed with your own seal. Let it be known that for the next 30 days, anyone who prays to any god or man other than Darius the king shall be thrown into the lion's den on the same day the offense is discovered. By my hand and seal, Darius the king, ruler of the Medes and Persians. Call my counselors together. We will begin the trial. O king, live forever. There is no need of a trial. I am guilty. Knowing the king's command, I have disobeyed it. The commands of the king are immutable, and once uttered, cannot be changed. I shall command my wise men to make every effort to search out some reason that the law may be found unenforceable. I do not think they will find one. Let them search you, King, but only for a short time. Because your own law commands that sentence be carried out the day of the offense. Already, the shadows are starting to grow longer. And you have only until sunset. Darius was angry with himself allowing himself to be fooled, seeing that their purpose was not for his honor and glory, but rather for my destruction. Everyone. And so Darius had the law book searched to discover if there might be some legal way to spare my life. It is as I expected. Why didn't I consult you before passing that accursed law? Now I'm forced to abide by my own decree. A king who will not enforce his own laws cannot be a king. Your enemies know this and use it to their advantage. Do not grieve, O king. The Most High does not want you to deliver me. If he grants me deliverance, it will be by his own hand, not yours. It is a privilege he reserves unto himself. And now it is time, O King. That I may not break your laws a second time. I will walk with you, Daniel, one last time. As you wish, O King. For those who have schemed to bring about my death, I will say only this. My forefather Abraham came from this land, and the Most High said unto him, 
I will make you into a great nation. I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse. They have surely cursed me and may yet live to reap the fruits of that curse. A cup of wine from the king's own hand. I cannot drink it, O king. It is blessed to your gods, not mine. Not so, Daniel. I have gone to your people and asked for wine which was blessed by them. From the cup I have poured no libation. One last gesture of friendship. My king. Goodbye, my friend. Farewell. But perhaps not goodbye. We have yet to see what the dawn will bring. Hero is real. Lord our God. The Lord is one. He is angry with us. It will fade. By tomorrow morning, Daniel will be a distant memory, and the king will need us again. Take it away. All of it. Tonight I honor Daniel in silence and with fasting. Now leave me. God, have mercy on me. In you, my soul takes refuge I am in the midst of lions surrounded by ravenous beasts whose teeth are spears whose tongues are sharp as swords I call upon your name O Lord from the depths of the pit hear my plea Come near, you say, do not fear, O oh Lord, take up my case, redeem my life. <laughs> oh, a divine plan, my friend. <clears throat> a toast to the lions who show no partiality to a Hebrew over any other man. <laughs> <laughs>
at all times. His praise be ever on my lips. Of those who seek the Lord will lack for no good thing. A righteous man may have many troubles, but the Lord rescues him from them all. You have rescued me from the mouth of lions, and I will declare your name to my brothers in the congregation. I will praise you. Out of my way, Daniel, servant of the living God. Has your God been able to save you? O King, live forever. My God has sent his angel, and he shut the mouth of the lions. They have not hurt me, because I was found innocent in his sight. Come forth. Behold, there is no sign of wound on him. For he has trusted in his God. Surely your God is above all men. For while you are in the lion's den, you are in his hand. How much must a man pay if he steals another man's treasure? With his hands, perhaps. But what if that man who is robbed is the king and the treasure is prized possession? Is there any penalty less than death which will do? If so, speak now and let me consider it. But, O oh King, he is a Hebrew. Why should you put such trust in him? This Hebrew is the greatest treasure I possess. He speaks to his God, and more importantly, his God speaks to him. You have deceived me as to your purpose. You fashioned my own words as a snare about my feet, knowing my edict could not be reversed. But the living God... The God of Daniel has delivered him out of my hand. For six days they have hungered, but today they shall feed. No, 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 spread a net for my feet. I was bowed down in distress. They have dug a pit in my path, but they have fallen into it themselves. I dare issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel. For he is the living God, and he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. He rescues and he saves. He performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lion. And so I served Darius throughout his reign. 